What we are creating here is something that goes beyond me, that goes beyond all of us. It's something that will be here for those that are still to come. This is like a, a, a project that I would like many people to be able to participate on and, and live the lifestyle that we live here. I think um, this is our legacy. I'm Thiago Braga, head coach of Legacy Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Australia. I used to be part of a different team, but I was always competing. And I used to watch the Legacy team when I was competing, and they were always together, and they always seemed like really close. And so when I wanted to change teams, like that was one thing I was really looking at, to have like a really competition team, but also like a family unit. Legacy for me is just my family. Is everything. I feel like I got a family here, friends, and someone who will always help me. Legacy is my family. I feel like the Legacy team is my second family. I love the competitive vibe that we get at our gym and our competition. Um, here today, everyone's with each other, supporting each other, and cheering each other on. A sense of family where people feel like they're part of something, and they feel like they're part of a group that cares about their development, their learning. Legacy is more than my family. It's like my my house. When I moved to Australia, Jiu Jitsu was in its you know infant days yet. Yeah. The academies were starting, you know, the teams were starting, but it was. I felt in the beginning that it was more like, you know, like a gym. You have a membership, you go in, there's a service that is provided, you go do your class, learn your skill, and then you go home. In the beginning I was missing that family environment, you know, that, that, that group that stays together, that does everything together, and that's where, uh, what I started trying to create with Legacy here. Um, that was my main idea, you know, to have what we have now. I remember when I first came over, I used to see Tiago and the black belts competing. And uh, Tiago would finish competing, he would run off the mats, jump over the fence, and then he'd come over and start coaching. And I would see that as a white belt, um, and I always wanted to be a part of that. It's not only a team that, uh, that I'm joined to train every day. All the guys, they my family, like, they my my friends also all outside of the gym we always catch up on the weekends we always together the challenges of you know a young person in australia trying to you know win in life and then winning jiu-jitsu um, were my initial challenges here but the bigger challenges were still to come when i opened my first jiu-jitsu academy in 2009 i believe and within a few months we couldn't stay in the place where we were and we pretty much had to leave. I had invested four years of savings at the time in opening that academy and I had to lose a big part of it and move to a new academy, which only four years later the building got burned down and we didn't have insurance so we lost everything which was another, another investment and I remember that was very um, that was big. I felt that you know that could have been the end of everything, but luckily because of this time, this time I was even more grateful for my training and my jujitsu that made me not have one day of hesitation. You know, academy was burned down on a Saturday night. The whole building was burned down. I arrived there Sunday morning. There were only ashes. Um, so I lost pretty much everything. Um, I had so much support from my students, my friends, the whole Jiu-Jitsu community, you know, that in 12 days we had a new academy opening up. I'm 100% I'm sure that I wouldn't be able to do that by myself. It's really great to see the, the support that we had from all around the world. I believe in like a few days, not a few days, but like a week, we had another place, mats down, and we were training. One of my students, um, she created a GoFundMe account without me knowing. And in a couple of days, she, she contacted me and said, Ah, oh, Chago, I need your bank details because, you know, I created a GoFundMe account and I had a few people donating money, so I need to transfer that to you, you know, for, for you to try and open a new gym. And I said, oh, all right, well, that's great. I didn't know, uh, I wasn't expecting, you know, like, 
I was already actually looking on selling my car. I was looking for a job. I was estimating like if everything goes right in three months, I can be starting with somewhere in a small hall and build it up again. And then I had a student that tells me like, look, yeah, send me your details. 24 hours later, I have $25,000 in my account. And I started going through the messages and donations. I had donations from all over the world. Um, the GoFundMe uh, link was shared in over 12 countries by Jiu-Jitsu academies and community. I, 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 had, I had some of my students that were donating money that I don't think they could even afford to donate. People from everywhere were just donating to, to build the team back up. And it, it just showed how important, how, how much of a family unit legacy was at the time is when it seemed like the most worst possible thing could happen. All my students that, you know, instead of going look for another Jiu-Jitsu Academy, since that the one they trained at just got burned down and wouldn't exist anymore, everybody stuck together with me for, for those, those, those rough days and we built something bigger. I felt that, look, if I have this much support and all these people backing me up, I can let myself down, but I cannot let all these people supporting me down. That was never an option. And I think um, that's what made possible for me to, in 12 days, have a place with mats and, and to be sitting here now teaching. The fastest gym setup, two and a half hours of work. Oh yeah, almost there. There's one thing that we learn in, in Jiu Jitsu that, you know, in between matches, we have to get up, tie up our belt again, and try again and go one more round. It doesn't matter if we win or lose, but during one match, we have to several times tie up our belt again and keep moving forward. Tie up our belt and keep going. And I feel that all this these problems that I encountered during my career in Jiu-Jitsu, I had to many times have this mentality of getting up, fixing up my belt, tying up my belt, and starting again, either with a fire or with the closing down of an academy, like whatever the situation was, was always the same.